1998 Yamaha R1, 1996 YZF750R, 1985 RD500LC and a 1987 RD500LC. I've been lonely for some time, even though I got too many friends. You approach me, I don't know why. I just wouldn't let you in I got myself wanting you Even though I never felt like you are the one I like to go back in time And just tell myself Don't Well, I certainly did not expect to see this here, a Ferrari 348 Spider, And to see one in this condition is absolutely amazing. This car is definitely on my bucket list. That's if they don't creep too far up in value. I think you can find a hardtop version for around about 50 to 60,000. So believe it or not, this car did not get a good reputation in the Ferrari world. Apparently at the time it underperformed. And not many people liked the looks or the styling of the car. I think it's fantastic. It looks like a combination between um, a Testarossa and a 355. Just look at the intake on the door. It's what you see on the Testarossa. And 60,000 is a good entry level for a Ferrari. And this is certainly going to be an investment car, especially with the condition it's in. And I think if you've got the money, now is the time to buy one because they're certainly not going to get any cheaper. And in the next four to five years, you could be looking around about 75, 80,000 for one of these. I've already seen some 355s pushing towards the 100,000 mark at the moment. I'll just make my way to the front now. Interesting fact about this car actually, at the front there, there appears to be a grill. It's not actually a radiator grill, it doesn't need one because the engine's in the back of the car. But Ferrari felt that it would look odd if it didn't have one, which you can imagine it would, so it's just for styling really. There is not one sign of wear and tear on the interior or dirt. The owner must have driven around wearing a pink suit well there you have it what a piece of art Porsche 911 GTS with the aero kit and massive 20 inch wheels 97 Carrera 2S 18 inch wheels quite a unique colour that actually this is nice a 911 50th anniversary edition I just love the grey Porsches look good in grey I think I just love how Porsche are uh, digging up the past and applying it to all their cars these days. One thing about Porsches is they never grow old.
Right, forget what I've said earlier about all the other cars, but if I was offered to take one of these out for free, it would be this one here. The 1969, is it? Chevrolet Camaro SS 396 Big Block. This was quoted around 370 horsepower at the time, which is a hell of a lot for the 1960s. And it was designed to rival the Mustang. So this is a uh, first generation of Camaros. And there was a lot of updates on this model compared to the 67 and the 68. With a more muscular body, light upgrades. And they also uh, upgraded the leaf springs. As the previous models had the uh, mono leaf springs which caused wheels to bounce when you would floor it which is not good for your axle again superb condition inside and out and this looks like original paint to me quite a nice selection of helmets here yes they do sell clothing as well you know they have far too many Troy Bayless replicas here Is that a Chad Davis replica there as well? 2012 World Superbike. MV Augusta F4, 2006 MV Augusta Senna, and a 2001 MV Augusta F4. Legend 1995 RVF 750, and a 1990 VFR 750, and another RVF 750. Wow. 1999 Honda CBR Fireblade 900 Evolution Edition. I can remember having a poster of one of these on my wall. Here's a muscle bike. The Honda VTR SP2. The bike that Colin Edwards took to the championship in the World Superbike title. I love how the radiators are mounted on the side of the bike. The VTR has to be the smoothest sounding V-twin on the road. These bikes immediately shot up or held the value when they left the showroom. bike it was an Harley Davidson 883 Sportster but it's been customized by a company called Style Italiano and it just has 
excellence stamped all over it. I can appreciate the amount of hard work that's going into this because it's not just your usual eBay bolt-ons that they're just thrown together and, uh, and sent it out there. Now I paint bikes myself and I really know how much work has gone into this paint job. The lines are perfect. You cannot feel the transition from the gold to the black and that's because they would have applied enough clear coat and wet sanded it and buffed it after. There's a massive culture at the minute for um, cafe racers. Just look at the detail on the exhaust, the welding's perfect. And just look at the size of the chain. I love how the silencer's flat and oval so it tucks right into the bike there. When you get closer more detail appears. They've just kept it simplified and that's what stands out. But this is definitely a show winner. These bikes look rich. I think, as I can remember, when the F4 was first launched, it had to be pretty privileged to have one of these. You could take a picture of any part of this bike and display it on your wall, and it'll still look good. You just cannot beat the MB Augustas for detail. The V4 engine would really suit this bike. The Ducati Desmosadisi. Production of these started in 2006 where Ducati built 1500 street legal versions and this is one bike I really have to own one day. So if you don't know what it is, it's practically the equivalent of a Formula 1 car on the road and the closest thing you'll ever get to riding a MotoGP bike because it is a MotoGP bike. And just in case you've never heard one running before, listen to this. <laughs> Three to four years ago, the cheapest I saw one of these online for sale was around 28,000 and now we're looking at least 60,000 to own one of these and I think the bike specialists have got all of them it has a 1000cc V4 engine and it only weighs 157 kilograms dry and you're looking at 0 to 60 times 2.6 seconds that's if you can hold on to it I just can't walk past a 916 without taking a picture of it or looking at it. Whatever you do, do not put one of these inside your house because it'll make your tea go cold, if you know what I mean.
Oh my god! I never ever thought I would see one of these. Where did they get it from? Last I heard, all these bikes were smuggled back to Malaysia. So this is a Petronas FP1. And it was originally developed by uh, Petronas and Sauber Petronas Engineering to compete in the MotoGP. But Petronas decided to race this in the World Superbikes instead. But to meet those requirements, they had to produce 150 road versions due to FIM rules. And the first 75 of them were built here in the UK in 2003. And out of 150 of them, only 100 were made available to the public. I've only seen them in green. I think the most exotic ones were in black or grey. So in 2003, Petronas joined forces with four-time Superbike World Champion Carl Fogarty and formed Petronas Racing. The only downside was that FIM changed their rules to allow 1000cc machines to compete in the World Superbikes. And they, sadly the FP1 was developed under the um, previous regulations and limited this to a 900cc so it had a bit of a disadvantage. What is that? Is that what I think it is? A CB750 Dick Mann replica. In case you didn't know who Dick Mann was, well... This can't be an original. Not in that condition. I wonder why it's in here. I wonder if it's someone's bike that's been serviced. Or is it for sale? I don't think I'm going to say much about this one. I'm just going to look at it. These classic racers are just grown on me so much. I wish one of the manufacturers would bring a bike out just like this. Wonder what it's like to ride it. I can only imagine. Sold. Well, this will go to some happy person. You know, this is the first time I have ever been up close to this bike, and it is truly amazing. I am absolutely gobsmacked. I think I would literally kneel before the designers and engineers who developed this bike. Kind of like all motorbikes, but this is just unreal. It's a 1200cc, 200 horsepower V4 engine. Norton, I've really punched a big hole in its competitors with the styling and elegance of this bike. This one has really got my attention. I have not approached this until last. And this has had a crowd around it all day. You just wouldn't expect this much detail from a production bike. This really has changed my thoughts entirely about which investment bike I'm going to make a move on. Well, it's been a fantastic day. I've really enjoyed it. 
I hope you've enjoyed my video. If you like my content, then please uh, hit the subscribe button. That way you'll receive more updates on when I post more videos. And please feel free to leave a comment. So I'll see you next time. Take care. Thank you. Self one